big idea, a new world order. G'day and welcome to Conspiracy with Josh Wade. My name's Josh Wade, and today uh, I have the hilarious Reese Darby. Welcome to the show, mate. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? All right. Good. 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 You've had a busy day of, of PR, and I've been listening to the radio. And how's that going? All right. It's a necessary evil. Um, <laughs> just, just having to chat and talk, and uh, sometimes they have no idea who you are. And, no, and they're, and they're trying to. Oh yes, that was good. That film you did, wasn't it? Uh, what was that? What was it called again? Yeah, you know. So there's a bit of that. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, you know, you, you've got to get the word out, and so you've got to do these things. And mm. you know, some some comics. Uh, really don't like doing it and i don't mind it i, mm. I have a, a bubbly personality mm. and you know if if i'm uh, having fun then it's fun you know yeah, yeah yeah i like talking a lot as well I, you know i guess that's a job being a comedian is you yeah you talk shit for a living and it's sort yeah of just... i mean exactly you've got to convey your uh, opinions on things and mm. uh, that's what we do mm. now you uh you've got a you've just finished doing a tour in new zealand but you've got a tour coming up in australia it's starting like really soon like yeah tomorrow tomorrow yeah, yeah. um so you got Sydney, Brisbane, you're doing all sort of the, yep, the major Adelaide, uh, Perth, yep. all the classics, Melbourne. Yep, yep. Do you want to give the plug on that, get the good shit out of the way? and Yeah, please buy tickets to the Adelaide show. Uh, I think there's uh, a few people down there wondering, Who, who's this guy again? Well, trust me, all the other cities, they're on board. Uh, we're selling out. Uh, Adelaide, just pick up the game, mate, you know. Watch something I'm in. Uh, and, and then, yeah, get with the program. And there is a program. Get with it. <laughs> um, so I first saw you, uh, I was maybe, I don't know, I used to sit there and watch Rove all the time. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like a diehard because I thought that's what I want to be. And as you can see, it's really working out well for me. And yeah. uh, anyway, I saw you on Rove and I had no idea like who you were. You know, you just sort of, I think, Flight of the Concords had been on for a little bit at that mm. point. And, mate, I have never... I. I just got a fucking man crush straight up. I oh, was really? Just, yeah, yeah, I know. Now this is really freaky in this fucking room <laughs> with all these cameras, eh? But um, that was just so funny. That was such a funny interview. And um, that was sort of my first Reese Darby experience. But okay. since then, mate, you've done some fucking incredible things. You really, like... But your life before that was... That's, a, that's an interesting story in itself. So um, I, I sort of wanted to talk about how you got into comedy and how you got into acting and, and doing all that. Was that something that you were always doing before the army or? Well, certainly uh, it was part of my makeup uh, mm. to be funny. Um, I got that from mum and dad. And I think um, growing up, uh, I watched a lot of comedy, mostly British stuff, mm. uh, BBC, Monty Python, um, Blackadder, yep. uh, that kind of stuff. Um, wanted to be those guys um but had a real um i guess uh feeling it was never going to happen because because of where i was mm -hmm. i was in new zealand i was in uh you know a country that's known for uh, other things rugby sailing um ice cream stealing people from you yeah <laughs> yeah and i and i think when i was young and and it always seemed to me to be the other uh and you know, there was no, and I, I never really had a, 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 a big love for stand up. Mm. Uh, it was always acting, it was comedy acting. Um, and, you know, you can easily look up the, the, the names that inspired me. I'm not going to list them all off, but the, most of them were British. Mm. And, um, and I kind of felt like that was, that was something I really loved. Uh, now, what am I going to do with my life? Um, and so I joined the army. <laughs> 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 I don't know how that happened, mate. When you when you are young, and you are influenced by things, yep. you really are, as you know. And I guess there was um, a TV show called Tour of Duty, which okay. was an American TV show about soldiers in Vietnam. There was uh, a lot of war movies. There was me not having my dad around, and there was mum pushing for a bit of discipline. Yep. And 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 I was in the air training corps, which is the like a cadet unit that uh, girls and boys could be part of, something for them to do after school, put on a uniform and, and march around. And, and I used to make models of aeroplanes and stuff like that. And I was, you know, I was a geeky kind of kid. Yeah. And uh, mum goes, oh, you should, you should join up into the, uh, into, the, into the army as well. And, do. and I was kind of her thinking, 
because I was I was the baby of the family and there was a nine year gap between me and my siblings and it was kind of her I believe sort of um, making sure that I was taken care of um, and so because dad wasn't r- around push push him into somewhere where he's going to be um, looked after and there's going to be uh, um, he's not going to f- fall on the on the wrong side of the tracks yeah yeah I grew up in like an army town and, and that was just sort of the same thing where people had all these different aspirations but it it just seemed like it was a safe... Security. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, you know, I was young. I was like 17 when I joined up. And so, um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fitness of it. I enjoyed the uh, the buddy, um, the buddiness. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say camadre, but it's such a hard word to get out. Mm. I'm tired. <laughs> well, I attempted it then. Um <laughs> Of, of hanging out in a gang and kind of being part of something and also the self-discipline. And let's be honest, you know, um, fun with all the weaponry and all the equipment. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, I, was, I was launching rockets off my shoulder and <laughs> it was cool. Um, so, but I knew even being in there for, you know, a, a couple of years that, that this wasn't going to be my thing. Mm-hmm. I was just, it was like I'd join scouts and and it was kind of you know with the uh, a dangerous version of scouts yeah yeah, yeah. it could be volatile <laughs> dropped version. into the yeah. middle east um <laughs> so it's kind of like hang on a minute what badge is this uh so i i got out before that happened yeah. and 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 funnily enough my unit then uh got paratrained and then they were dropped into um i don't know whether they were dropped in by by parachute, but they were probably just actually taken in a, a normal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A bunch of brand Our new... planes can't land. <laughs> yeah. So everyone had to be paratrained. And they were dropped in East Timor for like a peacekeeping oh, mission geez. and stuff like that and, and getting rid of the mines and stuff. And, you know, that's a, that's a whole different ball game. I mean, that's really serious shit. And for me... I grew up watching, a, 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 here's another BBC program, Dad's Army, which yep. you may have heard of. Yes, the, yep. um, and uh, so it's the funny side of, of, of uh, army life. Mm. And, um, and I love that show. And, and so I think um, I grew up in the army and I, and I realized it wasn't the soldier I wanted to be. It was the actor playing the soldier. So I just basically like dressing up. And, yeah. and uh, <laughs> so that when I realized that, um, I got out. And then I went to university and I think, well, what else am I going to do? And I'm, I took so long to grow up. Yep. And, uh, and I love the fact that I did because some, these days it's really important to grow up so much quicker. And they seem to, mm. you know, dudes are like, you know, billionaires at 25. And I'm like, yeah. what's, what's going on there? How yeah. did that even happen? No, you know, like, no. so that's the world we live in right now. Um, but I lived almost in a backward world. I was from a, 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 a small I wouldn't say a small town, it's Auckland, but I was in a, in a, from a <laughs> suburb, the eastern suburbs, Pakaranga, and it was kind of, you know, me and mum uh, against the world. Um, and That's a TV show there. Yeah, <laughs> me and mum against <laughs> yes, the world, well. yeah. I hope, I hope that I'm in a pitched for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't heard back yet. But uh, um, I can't remember what my point was. But, um, I, yeah, I, so once I left and went to university, I, I was still grasping at what it was I was mm. going to do. And I thought journalist. I thought I'm good at English. I'm, and that really at school I excelled in that subject because I was good at creative writing. Mm. And so, you know, if only I'd have thought, you know, 10 years back when I was um, obsessed with watching Monty Python, that, that that's what I should be doing. But it took me so long to to get to that point. And then and time catches up with you and, and things happen in time that um, – come into place and that was the stand-up industry in New Mm. Zealand just sort of started to kick off we got a comedy club um and so once I was at university I hooked up with a another guy we created a um a comedy duo Mm -hmm. and I started we started performing sketch uh surreal um sketches and songs uh very very silly python-esque stuff um and then we um that we started you know where could we take this and so it was um uh, the odd, the odd bar, uh, we'd do it for a free beer, you know, mm. and we even did some performances in, in a bar on, on, on like a, what they called the strip, uh, in Christchurch where it was really sort of, um, you know, a heavy drinking, um, uh, area where <laughs> the last thing I want to see is a couple of dudes come out and, and tights, you know, pretending they're frigate birds, uh, <laughs> and, and, and doing bizarre stuff like that. But, um, 
yeah, it was it it became it it started to snowball really yeah. in New Zealand, um, and then the comedy club opened up. I, I moved up to Auckland. Long story short, realized that this is the thing I'm good at, yeah. and then um, kept kept uh, doing the degree at university. Um, but really, the the comedy side of things, the performance side of things, started to become more of a, a stronger part of my life. Mm. Mm. Was it like so? You know, you've you've left the army, you've gone to university, and was yeah. that that was probably for more security, just because you don't really know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Once was... again, and I, I I stayed in Christchurch. I was yep. I was posted to this Burnham military camp. I think it's still there. Yeah. And and then North Korea hasn't got it yet, but <laughs> not, it's in its targets. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I think um, stay in Christchurch, and I, I loved Christchurch. That's where my comedy career really began, yep. and that's where I met my future wife. And uh, and she uh, co-ran a, a comedy club. It was a performance cafe. It was called the Green Room, and so things really started to come into place. And all of a sudden, I realised, oh, this is what I should be doing. Um, I've always been doing it without getting paid. Mm. I was a class clown at school, mm. and I was the army clown, uh, getting into trouble because of you know I, I was doing things wrong on purpose <laughs> uh, for laughs, and yep. uh, you know, so. Um, so then all of a sudden, my life started to make sense. Mm-hmm. And then once I finished that degree and moved up to Auckland, um, really, it, it became 100% comedy for me. Um, I still had to have part-time jobs working, you know, until I moved to the UK and then um, uh, got an agent. And, mm. then, and then, you know, the rest is history. So, like, in that time that you're spending between university and, and doing the comedy stuff, Obviously, even probably still to today, like with the entertainment industry, you're constantly walking on eggshells. Where it's like, is my time up? Like, like it's, it's anything but the army where it's, there's there is no stability. It's just sort of yeah, you're taking it. That's the big risk. Each gig, huge risk. So, what's that like going from something big yeah. like that and then going right? Like, it's basically like putting a thousand dollars on one spin on the poker. Yeah, and going fuck. I hope we win. It's total self belief, yeah. and that is from. Uh, being a kid and being laughed at my whole life, whether it be on purpose or just because people are laughing at me, and then growing up, getting mature with it and realising that um, it's going to work for you and and, um, and then it working and then um, and its influences of, of outside sources, other comics from, from Britain when I started performing uh, solo stuff in, in New Zealand would tell me your stuff is really great. It has, it would have universal appeal because it, um, you know, you do stories about uh, mermaids and jetpacks and things. Mm. Uh, mm. You could take that anywhere. You know, mm. you're not talking about life in New Zealand. You're talking about um, humanity and, mm. the, and the absurdness of it. Yeah. So, so I took that advice and, and, and went to Edinburgh, did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and then moved on to London and, and it's just uh, stage time and just, you know, developing, first of all, a really great 20-minute set, yeah. which was um, unique and it had sound effects in it. I, I, I did mime. You know, I was doing stuff that, that most stand-ups weren't doing. Yeah. And so I, I was um, out of the ordinary and then add, add my voice to that and where I'm from. And, and there's a lot, a lot of... Um, coolness about that because it's not you know the new zealanders aren't there's no threat there yeah you know, they're kind of when you think of a was you from new zealand you start laughing already oh okay poor guy is he <laughs> and so there's that kind of thing and we can we made we made um made that a strength yeah. that that we're from uh, 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 the middle of nowhere next stop antarctica mm-hmm. look how many sheep we have um but who's laughing now type of thing so yeah, i knew that yeah. was going to be something that i could i could build on yep um, and and my comedy in general is is kind of optimistic and silly. There's no, I don't bring down anything, mm. or I don't uh, give you a reason to heckle me. I don't, I don't. Um, it's not that I don't have opinions, but um, it's lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. what I like. Did you feel like when like growing up that the way that you looked at the world? Maybe you didn't realize it growing up, but I, you know not in an egotistical way, but do you feel like you looked at things in a slightly different angle to most people? 
Well, I mean, I can't speak for most people, <laughs> but um, possibly, yeah, yeah. I always felt, and that comes down to the individual, who, who you feel you are. I always felt a little different. Mm. I felt like if I was to talk about it now, uh, I, I'm from a family of five kids, but yeah. the, the other four were, were um, born um, in close... Uh, proximity of each other <laughs> the same <laughs> hospital no the same the same like they were part of a family before me right and there was a nine-year gap after that and i was the mistake and then um my parents split up after i was born and so i was part of a different i always felt an other yeah i always felt like an exception yeah and uh i would question why am i here you know i'm not uh, why am i i should i felt like that family already lived and yeah, then there okay. was this nine years later there was this night oh and this thing so i felt like i mm-hmm. literally dropped out of the sky yeah. and i used to say and still do say that i'm not really from here i'm from another planet yeah and uh, i j- opened my spaceship and i just became part of this yeah. the, this family because um, mum's kids had, had you know um, grown up and so i got her to look after me and um and so i always felt weird and i and and um and then because i was re- I've always been into weird humor mm. and then that just made me weirder and <laughs> and so i kind of um embraced that weirdness and mm-hmm. i think that became a uh, a thing for me to um i wasn't i wasn't really bullied at school but i was certainly um poked fun of a little bit and I, um, because of my humor, and that's my strength, that, I, that came from, I guess, through the blood from, from mum and stuff mm-hmm. and dad, that um, I had the strength to use my weirdness to make people laugh. Mm. And all of a sudden, you can't, you can't pick on that. You can, only have, you can only enjoy that. Yeah. And so people did enjoy that. And so that, that, became, um, that became my strength. Yep. Do you feel like um, that could have possibly come from, you know, the humour and stuff like that? Sometimes I, I think maybe it is some deep-rooted thing that I'm just trying to get acceptance in some way. Mm. My way of acceptance, because my story is, is quite similar to that, is I was never really bullied, but laughter to me was my sense of approval. I wasn't the guy playing football or anything yeah. like that. So do you think that that driving you to look for laughs and to try and find something funny out of a situation came from the fact that you were so maybe excluded, not excluded, but do you know what I mean? Like yeah. there was a, it's a really different, you were paratrained from another planet to fucking drop in and yeah, you were. I don't know. Cause I, I, I see that point, but I yeah. wasn't um, tr- desperately trying yeah. to make people laugh. It just came naturally to me. Yeah. And then I enjoyed it. And I just, I, I even to this day, I'll see uh, situations going on in front of me, very mundane, um, uh, you know, social interactions, and and I'll just, it'll make me laugh, and I'll just do impressions of it in front of them, and and I I, I, I feel like I'm a walking little mirror mm. that walks around and 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 can manages to mock situations uh, in a in a in a light-hearted, uplifting way yeah. where people don't get angry. Yeah. Um, it has happened on, on occasion where people have got angry, like, particularly in the in the armed services. Where, <laughs> I, would, I would mock mock the corporals and the sergeants and that in that kind of way by doing impressions of them, and then I got caught out doing it, and then I had to then do the impressions of those exact of those people in front of them. So that um, would be, but I but I thought this is an opportunity. So I just yeah. did a I just did a really hilarious and stupid impression of these people in front of them when yep. I was like seventeen, yep. and it made them laugh. Yep. And then the guy who who thought he was getting one over on me, the sergeant, you know, he sort of went, "Oh, that that backfired." They actually think you're funny. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's kind yeah. of like you know, um, I'm not I'm not a smart aleck, but you've got to be really smart to use your sense of humour. Um, in the right way yeah um and i've never thought of myself as smart but that's the one smart thing i have i guess is my mind is um is is i guess um connected in such a way that uh, i can take advantage of of the skills i have yeah yeah to get through life yeah all right so going from edinburgh to london and, and doing all that when was sort of the you know you've started out doing the live performance stuff when was it when did the you know camera come into it and when did that sort of yeah start to take it well it was the concords yeah. um you know that that was my first tv show and i i think my my journey if i had have 
planned it was always to end up comedy acting because yeah. that, that, those are the heroes that I had f- to begin with. Um, and so my stand-up was always a means to get there. Mm-hmm. And my stand-up was always, um, well, not always, but uh, was, a, was a combination of storytelling and also characterizations mm. and, and acting out scenes, becoming two or three people at once. Um, and so those acting moments then progressed into, you know, getting uh, becoming a, a, an actual character on a TV show. Mm. Um, and, and it just so happened to that one character, Murray, uh, you know, was was a big deal for everyone. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I loved him just as much as everyone else because I, but I had a lot of practice to get to that point, whether it just be on my own on stage or in the, in the mirror or, um, you know, in front of my friends a lot, just goofing around yep. and always doing silly voices and stuff. Mm. In fact, I... I gave the Concords a, an option of six different voices for this character, and they went with my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> and so I kind of I learned stuff, you know, from yeah. from Jermaine, who who also had you know more acting experience than me, yeah. and um, and so those two guys became really really close buddies, and and then you know we 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 took America on together. Yeah. Now that's yeah. that's a hell of a that's a hell of a story. That like. Did it always was it always going to America or how, how did that no. process go? Because that must have been a hell of a day going. We're going to America. Like, this yeah, is- it was it was a hell of a phone call for for me. Um, I mean, it started off as a radio series for yeah. the BBC, and and I, I, I even then I didn't think that was going to really go anywhere. That's a massive uh, deal. In, yeah, just that in was itself. a big, big deal. Um, and so once we made that, um, I was really really proud to be part of it and and was continuing on with my my career in in the uk um now at that point headlining clubs and this is a few years ago now so it's well, i guess it's uh probably looking at 12 years ago now yeah. um and really sort of questioning how, where am i going to go next mm. uh you know uh i want I, I wanted to get into uh, TV acting, um, so I was looking ultimately for some sort of sketch show situation mm. to to be part of, um, to be the guy in the British sketch show with this with this voice, yep. and and um, and that and that would be a great start. Um, but then the the American uh, TV pilot just just happened. I mean, on on their back, they were in the states. They did the Aspen Comedy Festival, yep. which was an HBO. Comedy festival. They were the the darlings of that of that festival, and then they got um, they got some offers not not just by HBO but by other networks as well to yep. make a pilot, and um, they decided to go down as you would the HBO route. <laughs> um, gave me a call, uh, Reese, come over. We want you to reprise that role, mm. and let's 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 do this um, a pilot for this show in New York. And you know it's it's hard to sort of comprehend really that mm. that being um an option for me at that at that time but timing was perfect because mm. i was it was i was getting to the point where i might just go back to new zealand because um i was i was struggling to get any further in on the entertainment field mm. in, in the uk i felt like uh they were happy for me to um you know be this club comic and be a be an alternative um act on stage that uh you know I was I was really blowing audiences away with some mm. of the stuff I was doing, and um, but to get in on the on the um, television front was you know nothing was happening there. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I thought well let's let's do it let's do America yeah and and they have been just the best set of opening arms you could ever get. Mm. Uh, there was no there's no qualms. Um, there's almost no guams now, but. No, <laughs> That's hey? right. Hey. But now, Adelaide, uh, you hear that? You <laughs> fucking cheap <cunts. laughs> um, But uh, they don't care about the class system, you know, and 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 because they don't have that. Yeah. Uh, so we were from New Zealand. We could have been from Antarctica for all mm. they care, mm. as long as they can um, uh, understand the the, the the English that we're talking. Yep. Um, then we're a total novelty, yep. and um, it's a massive uh, melting pot of, of of many cultures. And I I f- still feel that. You know, I would have loved to have um, done the the British thing more, but I just still feel like uh, being from a, a colony that there was a little bit of looking down uh, down their nose on on the fact that you know oh, he's from New Zealand. You know, he's not 
Mm. He's not. Um, so America didn't have that, and and mm. and so the the Brits, you guys, you missed out. <laughs> but I'll still be your Doctor Who if you really want me to. Okay, just let me know the next time. Well, just flick the bottle that, cap into your yeah, camera. Yeah, you get that, Britain. Um, in saying that, though, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you've seen it, but like. Flight of the Concords came out at a, like it, it just seemed like such a great time because it was sort of alternative humour. It wasn't something that was going to Channel Seven were going to just chuck on the on the bloody air. But at the same time, the internet was there, and yeah. that's how I'd sort of come across. Yeah. I, I'd, I hadn't seen an episode. I'd seen bits from right. the internet, and then that's how I got okay. into the show. Um, now, yeah, I'm sure you've seen it, but on that best of Murray, Murray, mm. you know, clips, everyone wanted you on The Office, and I thought oh, to yeah. myself, Oh my God. I'll, of course, like I mean, obviously, it's a you know it's, that's a whole other beast of getting onto that show, but um, that character just seemed to translate so so well that it, it is a cult figure. It's almost like I don't know, like it, it. I mean, it must. Does it annoy you at all? Like, does it get to a point where it's like you do you want to escape it at some point? Or? No, no, not, not really. And I think uh, I'm proud of him because he yeah. he is the. Um, the awkward guy that uh, wants to be someone else or wants to desperately be cool or popular. Yeah. Um, and but uh, we've all got elements of him in us, which uh, is that just which is that dorky. Yeah. Uh, doesn't really know what he's talking about, mm. but he's given it a go. Yeah. And is well-meaning and uh, he's endearing, and you feel sorry for him. Mm. And and I think we all have that. Yeah. And and that's what people clicked onto, and also. That luckily the 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 two um, uh, the guys that he was you know trying to, was latching onto the cool looking idiots yeah. were luckily even dopier than he was yeah. so he so the three of them uh, were like great together each other. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah if if one of the concords uh, the characters not the real concords but the, if one of those characters was smarter than 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 uh, what we see on the on the TV show. Then you know, and sometimes Jermaine, or sometimes they would be, they, but but they'd still they were still uh, lost without Murray, mm. and we saw that in in, in in many episodes, and so and Murray was certainly lost without them because he had nothing. He was just the, the cultural yeah. attaché <laughs> getting picked on by Aussies and yeah. stuff, and so so um, it was the blind leading the blind, yeah. and and I think that that threesome is is um, quite apparent in people's friendships. Yeah. You know, it's it's. Whether that be male or female, you've got um, three or you know three's often the magic number. Three friends who um, are as dumb as each other, mm. um, but there's enough s- smarts between the three of them <laughs> to almost make it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know? It's just a beautiful concept, and I think it, it just with what's on TV now, I think it was just such a yeah. nice, wholesome thing that just you know it just works. It will, like it'll Mr. be Bean timeless, and, and you can yeah. watch it with your with your kids and. Um, it's very quotable, mm. and oh, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, um, you know, it was going to live or die on on the music, and because their music is so amazing, mm. um, it's it's just a fantastic show. Yeah, yeah. Now after that, so you've done you've done this, and then it ramps up to another fucking level at this point. Now surely there's a point in this part of your career where you're going, holy fuck, what's, <laughs> what is going on? Like, I'm strapping myself in now because, I mean, Hollywood, I don't know, but yeah. I would guess is is just a total another beast and, and then that's come knocking at the door from the show. So what's what's that like? What's what's that feeling when they're going, we want you to be in Yes Men or we want me yeah. to be a bunch of... I, I think the, the, the thing that sticks out for me is um, how small Hollywood is mm. and how small the comedy world is. Mm. I mean, we, we made Concords and... Um, you know, there was a few other funny shows around, uh, The Office, obviously, and, yeah. and, and, and whatnot. But um, when you're part of something that becomes part of pop cult- culture, mm. uh, everyone's watching it. And then, of yeah. course, directors are watching it, writers mm. are watching it. And and when you're in that um, almost elite comedy circle, mm. um, people are going to w- want to work with you. Mm. And I and I, I didn't expect that, mm. um, but it was lovely to get a call from Peyton who uh, directed Yes Man, mm. and I was back in England at that time, and, and he said, you know, I want you for this role. With it's a, It just so happened to be a Jim Carrey film. Mm. And, you know, that's just one of those stars aligning thing up, yes. in, up in the heavens when you go, well, this, this, this is insane, because 
I've always been a huge Jim Carrey fan mm. and I hoped one day to meet the guy. You know, in my yeah. first movie, I'm working alongside him. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, I'm sure this kind of stuff happens for sports people as well in, yeah. their, in their world. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah, I guess you could do an analogy if, you, if you're into sports looking at that and, and the arts because um, sports people train their whole lives to try yeah. and get to the point where they can be part of a, that that team or or, or or in part of that league and I guess I did the same thing but through mm -hmm. um, through comedy and, and through um, uh, through art by by rehearsing and, and and just and having my blinkers on and having this idea that I was going to make it mm. um, I didn't uh, if uh, this is a funny story but I'll, I'll tell it anyway <laughs> um, you know when I was I had an agent in in the UK um, I had I had two I had Brett and and Nigel and and they were kind of um, they were for bound and gagged, and uh, I can't remember which one said it. Let's just say it was Brett who asked me. He said, "Where, where do you see yourself in five years?" This is when I was just got my first agent for for stand up. Okay. Yep. And and I said to him, "Oh, I'd love to be in a Jim Carrey film." And then five years later, that happened. Yep. And so that I mean that's not going to happen for everyone. No. But to to sort of have that, have those balls to say that, yeah. because I think what he was asking was, you know, do you want to be closing big clubs at that point? And yes. I said, no, I want to be in a film. I want yeah. to be, you know, when you're working with the the funniest guy that I think is on the planet. Yeah. And uh, he kind of laughed and but wrote it down and then showed me years later that that's what I said and I couldn't yeah. even remember saying that. Yeah. You know, I might have been joking, but I'm 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 always never half joking. Do you feel like <laughs> yeah? Do you feel like there's some power in that though? Because I, yeah. I, I think that there, I heard an analogy totally. once of someone going, you know, if, if we view our human bodies as cruise ships and you mm. wouldn't turn that thing on full ball and then just float off, like we need a destination yes. as ridiculous as it is. So yep. w like now, like obviously you've done it, you've got the Jumanji thing coming up and there's a bunch of other things, obviously the tour, you know, where are you going to be in five years? If I, if I can plop that question on you now and then show you in five years when Rupert Murdoch owns this show. <laughs> <laughs> Where will you be? Where 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 would you like? To I see still this? I still really want uh, Peter Sellers is one of my my all time comedy um, heroes, and mm -hmm. I still want to be the lead in in a movie or a, a series of movies where I'm playing a character that defines me, yeah. uh, and that uh, that I can really make my own and improvise with and do something al along the lines of what he's done with. Um, Inspector Clouseau and, and, yep. and the Pink Panther movies, to something where in generations to come you can put these things on and, and just love that. And, and you know, the same thing, Jim Carrey's done the same yep. kind of thing. And um, so that's, that's I've still got that to aim for. Yep. And, you know, I often think, well, I'm just going to have to write it myself because no one's coming t to me with it. And and so that it could be that. But um, uh, other than that, the other thing I see myself uh, doing in the future is somehow being involved in 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 space, getting off this planet, mm -hmm. and uh, whether it be entertaining on a on a on a, on a space cruise ship, yeah. the first one to Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I'm seventy, you know, <laughs> yeah. look, you, you've got to have uh, you've got to have um, you've got to keep having goals. Don't give up on your goals when you when you're forty three, um, because. Uh, this is all we're here for mm. on the planet mm. is to um, keep goaling it, whether you're shooting goals or making goals. Yeah. Um, make people happy. Make everyone around you happy. Be happy yourself. It's a, it's a difficult thing. And, um, you know, <clears throat> am I happy? Maybe not. But uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with the idea that um, happiness is something I'm, that I'm keeping, that I'm always striving yes. for. Yeah. And I think that's, that's our goal as a, yeah. as a human. Yeah. Do you, I mean, because I've read some of your stuff and, you know, it seems like this show, I mean, we try not to go around conspiracies and that. But yeah. obviously there's a lot that's happening in the world and it seems there's a lot of themes in uh in your comedy and your books and stuff like that where it where it is sort of this the what ifs of the world yeah. and stuff like that and i guess that fascinates you do you think that do you really think like because i i would love to believe it i love to fantasize about it but do you think that we're going to be on on another planet soon do you think we are going to be the aliens um yeah i mean i i think about this on occasion and 
and I believe in uh, multi-dimensional yes. universes, yes. and I and I think that if they link up, mm-hmm. then there there is a theory that all aliens are just us from other dimensions or us in the the deep future coming back and being able to come through and and, and watch ourselves from another period. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, I'm not saying that's definitely the truth, but I I, I like the idea Mm. that that's a possibility. And um, because the the biggest issue with with aliens being aliens and not being ourselves is, you know, when are they going to attack? Because, you know, they are there. They are coming. And if it's just all about peace and, and then there's these beliefs, which I, which I am included in, that there's more than one species. There's different mm. types of, of aliens, um, reptilians, greys, yep. whatnot, oh, Nordics. Man. I'm um, so glad that you are on this train because <laughs> this, this is a really important conversation that people need to have. And we're getting closer to it. And it's not crazy. It's not a conspiracy. No. It's there. And there's too much. It's almost irrefutable, I think. We're yeah. silly to be blinded by it not being a possibility. Yeah, and this, and this is why I was excited to be part of the X Files because <laughs> I was I became part of the inner circle, yeah. and uh, and being on that show not not to say that I found out any more information, but being in the zeitgeist means that you know doors open and yeah. doors have always opened for me. And I'm not saying I'm the chosen one, but it means that if there's a possibility of me getting closer into what's happening in the in, in the government side of things mm. in America. Uh, and I'm using my entertainment to get through into there. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure no one sees this. Uh, <laughs> the plan will be you know, exposed. But um, I would love to find out in my lifetime, uh, and I think it will happen, mm. that um, the truth is going to come out. Mm. And uh, um, will it be? Will we? Will we be okay? I think we will be. I think mm. because. Um, but it's going to take. It's probably going to take uh, a few a few mega death situations for us to see that because you know we're destroying ourselves as yes. humans, and I think these other species, these other guardians, if you like, of the of the galaxies, <sighs> mm. uh, are witnessing it and are probably going to come in at the last minute and and make sure that it stops. Um, or this is what. Um, forces us to leave this planet because we end up ruining it. Yep. And is it going to happen in our lifetime? No, because it, things take so goddamn long. Mm. But, um, and this is what my show is about, is is the idea that our souls live again and then we, we become other, other things. Mm-hmm. And so that, you know, because we're too amazing, we're too amazing guys just yeah. to live yeah. for 80 or 90 years and then yeah. cark it and have it. nothing else. Yeah. I mean, we definitely transcend into... Um, into other beings or, or the next generation of creatures. And so, yeah, aliens are either us in the future or it's just um, alternate um, versions of ourselves yes. when our souls move on. So where's my mum right now? You know, she's either a, a reptilian from another another galaxy yep. waiting to, for me to, to find her again or or she's uh, or she's a bird. Uh, yeah. You yep. know, so... So yeah, those are the those are some pretty big ideas. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Um, why not think like that? Because if you want to just be a closed mind um, buffoon and 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 you know watch your Netflix and, yeah. and drive your car around and then you know you don't have to soon with the fucking Tesla. You don't even need to do. Yeah. You don't even need to that. Don't even effort. have to do that. It's about getting this mind and this brain to actually expand to you know the full capacity of a hundred percent, rather yeah. than the thirty or forty percent we're yeah. running on it at the moment. Yeah. Hey, let's get up, let's have a coffee, let's go for a run. Oh, I've got to lose a bit of weight, and then uh, what's on TV? And then it's the next day. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. boring is that? That yeah. can't be your entire existence. Mm. Even the even the ancient Greeks, yeah, you know, they were all about wisdom and about learning about mm. why are we here and the yep. bigger questions, and that's what we should be concentrating on. Even even the early days of of, of schooling, yep. when um, humans are you know their real uh, uh, hunger, mm. hungry period of learning. Yep. Um, you know, my kids eleven. And seven, I mean, they're already, uh, they can pick up new languages really fast. Mm. And uh, so I think that we need to start teaching um, kids alternate theories on life at the, at the grassroots level yeah. Yeah. so that we can um, uh, come to, and it'll be all, but the problem is we all need to do it. It's mm. not just the Western world or not just no. that country or not just these. And, 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 you know, there's too many, too many issues, too many traditions, too many religions to, um, for us to get to that point yet. And I really wish that if, if, if these uh, other alien species expose themselves to us now, 
it would actually wake us all up and we mm. would actually then consider that um, we're not quite going down the right path mm. and that we should actually be... Um, we have the entire universe to explore. What mm. are we doing? Just yeah. dicking around yeah. on this blue planet. Yeah. You know, we've all seen David Attenborough's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. um, that's oh, we're still learning about whales. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, that's, that's really interesting. I'm really glad you said that. Do you feel like there's, there could be, though, what you just said then, like there could be, there's two theories to this that I've heard, that obviously there's an agenda at play of, of making sure that, you know, these conversations aren't necessarily had to right. slow down, obviously, our evolution. But there's this other theory that sort of links into that one that um, that we are sort of already in this Star Wars thing where there there are other entities out there that are... There's a there's a force between good and evil. And I'm, and I'm not talking about terrorists or anything like that. I just mean sort of, you know, um, the spirits or the whatever is inside of us, our consciousness, that it's, it's a, like a push-pull thing and that there are... The, the good ones, the good aliens mm. that are sort of out there and they're Palladians and stuff like that that are sort of on our side, but then there's sort of the other ones that are that are fighting over this this planet. Um, right. I don't know why that is because I heard Joe Rogan discuss this and then he sort of said we'd be very egotistical to also think that we're this one almighty planet that they're all coming after and they all yeah, want. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, but, yeah, do you think that there's somewhat of a an agenda at play by some group of people... I'm not, no, I'm not talking about like a, an Illuminati group of people, but I'm sure there's... There, there's some con- controlling going on. Yes. Yeah, it definitely feels like that. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and sometimes it feels like if you take a huge big look at the big picture and we are this beautiful little blue planet in the middle of nowhere um, that that we have been put, put on here um, and, and manufactured to... Um, to get it going, to, to turn it into something, because otherwise what's the point of evolution? So we're mm. evolving uh, technology and everything comes slowly. I mean, it's it's getting faster and faster, but, uh, you know, is, is it a huge big project and, and who's who's in charge of it? Mm. Um, and then and you, we do feel a little bit like hamsters in, in that way. Um, but uh, is the good side and the bad side here? Is, is is you know what's the reason for all the mm. the different beliefs and, and why do we why are we always warring with each other why mm. why do we enjoy that why is that even in our brain and especially with boys we like fighting we like you know uh, whacking each other you know and, mm. and from having kids you know girls don't don't really feel that way but from having two boys they like nothing more than <laughs> you know is that a bi- bi- do you think that's either something drum biological or it's biological yeah, yeah there's something there where do you think that's played on us. And then used to, you know, train us to go to war for I don't money. Know. Or? I don't know. I think um, it's it's weird because you don't see it with with other animal species that they're mm. not they're not fighting each other. They they no. sort of all get along, except primates do. Yeah. So there's something there, but it could be just an amiss. It could be just a a glitch, <laughs> or or is it there so that we, um, uh, yeah, fight strongest i mean that that's the whole thing is uh, survival of the fittest is, mm. is to get to the point where uh fight 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 the winner is is the one who uh has toppled the rest yeah yeah i, I kind of believe i i i'm 90 percent there that i go i'm probably subscribed to the fact that's what has been happening and is happening and we're almost there like it's almost for western society at least what happened, this is what I ask myself sometimes when I'm stoned and, you know, in all do- sorts of different mental places. What happens if we do beat North Korea and we do, like, because that's the mindset of you've got to beat Russia. We've got, mm. What happens if the West controls everything? I've heard that the theory of the guy that wrote Star Wars, that was sort of his mindset and that when you do have sort of a, a one governing body and sort of a currency system that's all the same, then how does the world keep sort of ticking over and operating and that sort of where this Star Wars theory comes from and that that's why they haven't really been exposed to us yet because right. they don't want to break that down. They'll use it at the yeah, right time. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, but the only other thing I was thinking about there yeah. is that, that the wheels keep turning mm. and uh, in order for, thing, for anything to go round and round, you look at a wheel, you know, it's got to crush yeah. something yeah. and then it keeps... And then, and that rises to the top, and then it goes down and gets crushed yeah. again. So, yeah. it's, and the, and and that's exactly what's happening with Earth. So, um, 
I mean, great societies, great cultures, ancient cultures have, have risen and fallen, mm. and uh, so have empires, and mm. it just keeps happening, it keeps yeah. happening. And at the moment, you know, it's, it's, it's the Americans or it's, or it's the Russians, mm. and it's whoever's turns next. I mean, and you've got, uh, you know, North Korea, get, let's... Can we have a turn? No, no, because you're, <laughs> yeah. you're ridiculous, and it's it's all fake, mate. You mm. can you can you can yell out and do whatever you want. Yeah. You're going to get squashed in, a, in yeah. a minute. So, I don't want that to happen because no. you know, just because that, that that dude and his family are just oh. purely they're mental. I know. <laughs> I, I say I say that North Korea is sort of the kid that was in your primary school that'd go, my dad's going to bash your dad, but none of the dads know what's going on at all. Yeah, it's just they're jumping, they they're dying for this attention. But then I also think, well. What if North Korea is just the Osama bin Laden in country form, sort of like this poster boogeyman to sort of distract from something else that's going yeah. on? It's just, anyway, the world's fucked. I think yeah. we've come to that conclusion. We'll never really know what's going on, but I think it's important to explore it's everything. A, it's important to look at it and, and take a big, have a look at the big picture mm. and come up with your own theories. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I've said some things today that are absurd, but it's fun. And it's yeah, fun it is. To, that's the best it's part. To, it's just fun. Yeah, get, the, get that muscle working. Yeah. And 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 have a laugh at it, yeah. and uh, you know some people take it really seriously, and they end up extroverting themselves, yes. and, and they become weird, and then yeah, hopefully yeah, they, they don't do. get a gun license. <laughs> but, you know that does happen. But it's, oh, it's, Adelaide, get the fuck to the yeah, show. Um, yeah. That's really good. That's funny. yes, Adelaide. <laughs> you'll you'll see. You'll see how much fun I can have on stage, and 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 you know everything I say is in light, but uh, there's there's truth there too, and it's just. Um, you know, and do we live once? If we do, then I'm giving it a bloody good shot. Yeah. And but hopefully we live on and on again. Reese, mate, I I really appreciate you coming on the show. You're you're a fucking excellent comedian. You're a very 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 oh god, I hope I didn't sound like so. <laughs> I'm impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. It's all coming. Yeah. I can't say that in today's society. You're white. Um, but mm. thanks for coming onto the show. I really do appreciate you having a chat. And uh, all Reese's tour dates will be down below in the description. Get along to the shows. They're happening right now. Um, but, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll be able to show you that uh, in five years. Can't wait, man. Yep. All right. See you all later. Right. Thanks, Reese. See you, guys.